and always keep your webcam off disabled so that we can help with everyone's bandwidth so ensure to be seated in a silent room so that you can concentrate on what's going on and also once you have asked your question kindly unmute your sorry mute yourself so that there won't be any echo problems like which was there in the morning during the question session so apart from that i request the same cooperation which you have rendered in the morning so these are uh, the instructions and uh, we will wait for the speaker to join us immediately once he joins we will start the session Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Dr. Sita Raman, sir. Good afternoon. Hello. Sir, good afternoon, sir. We'll, uh, we'll once, since the uh, speaker of the session has joined, we will uh, start you know, on time.
सिंधु मैडम सर शेली साथ सर हाँ यस क्या था यार इसी वाले कॉल पर नो सर ओके सर नो सो आई वाज वेटिंग फॉर यू टू गेट बैक सर नो प्रॉब्लम ओके सर so now it is time for me to introduce uh, the head of the department and the senior uh, professor uh, dr sita raman uh, he is uh, he has actually more than two decades of uh, teaching experience and uh, hope he will enlighten you uh, during his speech and he will introduce the department and uh, more about the institute he will share with you thank you and sir it is over to you sir okay madam dear students am i audible yes sir you are audible sir okay dear students and colleagues good afternoon to all i am happy to share few things about the curriculum and the orientation program so naturally the question is why all the institutes are organizing this program before starting of this um, semester so the reason is to bridge the gap of your students life to college life actually this orientation program plays a vital role in a student transition to a college life orientation programs are aimed at familiarizing the students to an unknown campus environment its faculties and infrastructure it enables them to make essential connection with their studies and develop network among the seniors so in the beginning of the first year the institutes are conducting the orientation program because of the students need to made aware to their surroundings in the campus so this program includes introductory sections giving them an overview of the institute life the rules and regulations mandated for each student in a particular institute so it is essential for the students at the beginning of the college session which allows the students to get settled in their new environment and teacher coordinator of every stream sets a model of introductory program that includes academic as well as the social activities so the main objective of organizing this orientation program is introducing the students to their institute life and incorporating them into the institute environment and giving the opportunity to the institute members and faculties to get connected with the new batch so this is the most essential aspect in any institute irrespective of the nature of the course the students need to be made aware of the social environment of their institute the social factor most definitely includes the extracurricular activities social clubs events workshops and other training programs whether it is co curricular or extra curricular available in the institute so this program encourages the students to help them in getting socially integrated with the institute culture in the early few weeks of the institute itself a student should be able to discover his interest in any of the institute activities other than the 
mainstream that is curriculum of the course the social involvement will make sure that the student don't lose interest in the institute life and hence the students can concentrate on their regular academic activities thereafter so the introductory session most importantly aims at giving an overview about the academic courses pursued by the students by giving an rough idea of the academic expectations so that the students can prepare themselves for facing the challenges during the graduation so the orientation programs are organized and delivered by the eminent lectures and experts in the various fields to the new students to mentally prepare them for awaited professional life they have set out to achieve the orientation program in institute also gives an opportunity to the students where they can self evaluate their aptitude level by participating in the various co curricular and extra curricular activities so the attending the orientation program enable the students to make important connections with the institutional environment academic studies peers and network with the campus community the second most important aspect of an orientation program is to make the student familiar to the campus surrounding even though now we are conducting the offline but once you see come to the college then you can see the environment so the interaction among the students and the institute community strengthen the students persistence in the institute a feeling of belongingness is inculcated in the students mind during the orientation which make them feel a part of the institute community institutions appoints a senior students in the orientation leaders who can also share their own experiences with the newcomers and make them aware of the awaited experience so every orientation program is designated in such a way that every nook and corner of the basics is being clearly conveyed to the students and each one of them has an emerging enthusiasm for the upcoming events of the program so interest is the thing that can be cultivated within our minds whenever we want so it all comes down to our hands to make them a final decision in order to make this orientation as successful as well as informative so with this i have to explain about the curriculum before that in earlier days we have a bachelor of engineering now we are bachelor of technology so what is the difference between bachelor of engineering and bachelor of technology bachelor of engineering program is more theoretical in nature whereas the bachelor of technology is the most practical oriented so the difference between these two courses is a minor kind in general engineering as a science deals with the theoretical concepts and principles underlying a given engineering discipline technology is concerned with how these theories and principles are put or applied to work so majority of engineering and technology courses offered in the undergraduate level by various institutes have more or less the same curriculum while pursuing a course in engineering or technology what matters to you 
the most is the college or institute that offers the course so our ec department the present intake is 30 plus the other categories like ews as per the government of india norms and the presently department is supported with four faculty members and one adult faculty are working in the department since december 2019 so myself dr g sita raman I am the head of the department for this electronics and communication engineering branch and supported by Dr. R. Krishnamurthy and his specialization is optical networks and wireless communication. Next Dr. Suresh, his specialization is compact modeling of micro electronic devices with emphasis on electrothermal heating. Next, Dr. Sendhil, his specialization is VLSI design and one ad hoc faculty member, Dr. Mrs. Bharati. And about the curriculum, the EC curriculum has the following components. Anyway, another few days we will upload our curriculum in our website so you can download. Just I will give you the overall idea about our curriculum. So our EC curriculum has the following components like program core courses, programming elective courses, open elective courses, global elective and internship and project work. So the students you have to complete totally there are 18 program core courses with 55 credits the total credits for the entire curriculum is 164 164 credits with this 18 program core courses with 55 credits so you have to concentrate on more on core courses because these are the very essential courses and you must know the basics and fundamental which are more important for your future career. So nine program elective courses with 27 credits. Actually we have splitted our electives into different domains like devices and circuit which are related to one domain and VLSA is another one and communication is another domain and general is also there apart from that we have interdepartment like computer science courses also we have specified in our curriculum so you can choose any electives Apart from that, we have two open elective courses and online courses with nine credits. And also in seventh semester, you have to undergo summer internship, which has the weightage of two credits. And in eighth semester, you have to do the project with the weightage of six credits. Apart from theory, we have 14 practical lab classes for 28 credits. So each lab has two credit. So totally you have 28 credit. So if you add all the core courses, electives and open elective and labs, internship and project work, so totally it is put together 164 credits. So in first, second and third semester, you have a mathematical paper 
and computer programming papers are also included in most of the semesters because our institute is indian institute of information technology so the students not only good in hardware and also equally good in software so that we are institute is giving an opportunity to learn both hardware and software that is programming as well as the hardware skill like that our curriculum is framed with the eminent professors from iits nits and other premier institutions and we are following the relative grading anyway the examination sections will explain what is relative grading and what is absolute grading so i don't want to go in detail and all the students are permitted to do internship in research labs and industries leading industries and already we are the our institute is part with various industries we may aware of it and the students are highly motivated the institute is highly motivated our students to present papers in the conferences we are encouraging all the faculty members are very much supportive to help the students for their improvement so that the students are motivated to publish papers in, in the conferences national conferences journals also the students are frequently permitted to participate in various technical and non technical events conducted by the premier institutions in triple it trichy all the core theory courses are supplemented with laboratory exercises mini projects and case studies the curriculum is framed in such a way that the students will be industry ready towards the end of the course and also customized to shoot the conditions prevailing in the industry by providing internal or external industry participation with the kind of support provided by the triple it trichy as with the reputed industry partners and other software industries so that this course should be able to meet the requirement of industrial ready students coming out of triple it trichy as predicted in our objective our aim is to deepen the knowledge and skill of the students on the basic concepts and theories that will equip yourself in their professional work which involves analysis system implementation operation production and maintenance of various applications in the field of electronics and communication engineering so this program being a multi dimensional branch prepares you for a wide range of career opportunities including biomedical engineering computer hardware aerospace nano electronic chips photonics nano engineering robotics and so on not only in hardware sector ec student has an added advantage of getting into software domain as well as with the programming knowledge based on that our curriculum is tuned with both programming as well as more core courses so with this i thank the organizer for giving an opportunity to share few words about the curriculum also i thank all the first year students be ready to face the challenges with the good knowledge competence brave energetic and good health wish you all the best thank you
thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, valuable words and uh, uh, a good overview of uh, how it will be once they enter and how the courses will be in all those <coughs> inputs. Um, yeah, hope the students uh, have received some inputs from you. Thank you, sir. And now it is time for me to invite Dr. Uh, Danlakshmi, uh, Head Department of uh, Computer Science and Engineering. Um, so she is uh, another uh, senior professor in our institution. She will guide you through the uh, things that are related to computer science and engineering department. Ma'am, uh, I welcome you to the session. Thank uh, you, Sindhu. Over to you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome for you all. This is Dr. Dan Lakshmi, heading department of CSC. HODCEC has given an overview of uh, attending the orientation. Let me summarize once again in short. Orientation programs gives an opportunity to the students where they can self-evaluate their aptitude level by participating in many sessions. And also orientation lays main foundation for the agenda in the upcoming days. And it also lets us know about the importance of this program. The goals and objectives are mainly to introduce madam, your voice is not clear madam madam voice is breaking mm. no sir it is clear uh, with me oh, it is clear only ma'am no, okay sir, i have connected to the broadband only okay sir see the goals and objectives of new student orientation are to introduce the students to the institute, which will support to set their educational and personal goals, to familiarize the students with the campus environment, to create an atmosphere that minimizes anxiety, promotes positive attitudes, and stimulates an excitement for learning, to provide a welcoming atmosphere for students and families to meet the faculty and other new students. The outcomes at the end of this workshop are the students will be introduced to the institute and the campus environment. The students will feel confident and the students will become familiar with the faculty and staff members associated with the institute. About the department, so here department of CSC has started with an intake of 30 students. There are four faculty members in the department. So along with me, there is a strong team to take care of academics. Uh, now let me introduce ourselves. See, uh, myself, uh, I'm Danlakshmi. I have around uh, 21 years of experience, out of which uh, I have total of 11 plus years of teaching experience and 10 years of industrial experience. I have worked in various companies such as D-Link, IBM, Cisco, and HCL Technologies, and I have joined Triple ITT during last year. Now it's time for me to call upon Dr. Renuka to introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. N. Renuka Devi. I'm working as assistant professor in the department of CSE. I'm carrying an experience of uh, 15 years in this teaching profession. And in the month of December, I joined to play Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I call upon Dr. Devasena to introduce herself. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. G. Devasena. I'm having uh, four years of experience, including NIT Trichrapalli. And my area of interest is image processing and machine learning. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Next, I call upon Dr. Anup to introduce himself. Hi, good afternoon, students. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Anup Jacob Thomas. I finished my B, uh, B.Tech from SCT, Sri Chitra College of Engineering, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. And I did my PhD from IIT Roper, Punjab. Um, I joined uh, IIIT Trichy in the month of December 2019. Okay, and uh, I have been working from ever, from then, and I I was a passionate uh, free software and open source volunteer and enthusiast, as per my uh, during my B Tech days, and uh, that helped me fo move forward to IIT Bombay in a project 
uh, after a brief stunt in teaching. So I moved to IIT Bombay in a project for on free software uh, in science and engineering education. It's a project called FOSSEE, for free. And then I moved on to uh, do my PhD. And I have a teaching experience of about three years in uh, three institutes. So uh, I have uh, last place I worked before coming to IIIT uh, Trichy was IIIT Kotayam. And before that, I was working in the industry for a, a brief period of about one and a half years. So that is it about me. I'm uh, excited to meet the new batch and the new batch of students. Uh, it will be a good journey, is what I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anu. Now, next I call upon Dr. Bala to introduce himself. Yeah, good, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, this is Dr. Balaji. My research area is cryptography information security. I'm having two years experience. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, coming to the curriculum. So, CSE curriculum has been revised in this year. Okay, it includes core courses, elective courses, open elective courses, self-study or online courses, internship and project work. The curriculum for CSE has been framed after extensive deliberations and discussions with the Senate members. Okay, so the students will have to complete 18 program core courses, which carrying a credit of 55 and nine program elective courses with a total of 27 credits two open elective courses out of eight subject given and three self-study or online courses which is an equivalent of nine credits and everyone have to undergo the summer internship in seven semester which carry which is carry, going to carry a weightage of two credits in the eighth semester the students have to do the project which carries a weightage of six credits Apart from the theory classes, the students have to do the lab classes also. Uh, so totally 15 lab, uh, lab classes are there, which carrying a weightage of 30 credits. The total credits comes to 164. Uh, the curriculum will be updated in the Institute website. You can check there. And uh, for uh, the assessment methods, uh, relative grading is used to assess is the performance of the students transparency is there at all the stages you can see the marking scheme for all the cycle tests and after announcing the results also if the students need any further clarification they can submit a representation to the dark committee which is nothing but department academic appeal committee the members of the dark committee are the head of the department as a chairman internal member from the department and external member from the other department and the subject handling faculty is, will also be a member. So whatever the representation uh, comes from the students, right, this committee will analyze and uh, further they will go for the conclusion. Okay, so let me uh, uh, show the curriculum which has been framed for BTEC CSC. Uh, as I mentioned early, earlier, the curriculum for all the programs has been framed after extensive deliberations and discussions with the Senate members. Nearly four to five meetings we conducted and finalized the uh, syllabus in a span of one year. Okay, let me uh, share my screen now to show the CSE curriculum. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. So in the first semester, the students have to take up all these courses, that is English for communication, carrying a credit uh, credits of two, and mathematics with three credits, physics and physics lab with five credits, introduction to computer programming and lab with five credits, basic mechanical engineering with two credits, and engineering practice with two credits. So totally, in the first semester, uh, the total credit comes to 19. And in the second semester, the subjects listed out are Mathematics 2, Engineering Graphics, Basics of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Introduction to Python Programming, Digital System Design, Data Structures, Energy and Environmental Engineering. And the labs are Digital Laboratory and Data Structure Laboratory. So in the semester two, the total credit is 22. 
and in the third semester uh, we have discrete structures design and analysis of algorithms with the associated lab programming paradigms computer organization and architecture oops with oops lab and programming paradigms also supported with the laboratory in the semester 3 the total credits comes to 22 and in the semester 4 the csc students will be learning probability statistics and queuing theory economics for engineers data communication and networks operating systems automata and formal languages microprocessor and microcontrollers with uh, os and microprocessor labs so the total credit comes to 23 and in the semester 5 the elective courses are introduced and uh, in addition with the additional core courses such as compiler design database management systems artificial intelligence and here you will be learning in addition to this core courses you will be learning or and here you have two electives the electives you can opt from your based on your interest you can opt the electives okay so in addition to this you will be doing the compiler design lab dbms lab and professional ethics course also so the total credit uh, in semester 5 comes to 22 in six semester you will be learning software engineering internet working protocols web technology and two electives this global electives right you can take in addition with ec students also so here since after six semester you will be sitting for placements that's why an additional technical english course is also introduced to train you further here the labs associated in six semester are network laboratory and web technology laboratory and in the six semester the total credits comes to 21 in the seventh semester and the, during the six semester break you have to do an internship in any of the uh, companies uh, for a period of six weeks and it will be evaluated in the seventh semester so this internship carries a weightage of two credits in the seventh semester only one core course is introduced that is machine learning with the associated lab the rest all the courses are electives based on the students interest you can opt the electives so in the seventh semester the total credits comes to 19 and in the eighth semester you have to undergo this whatever you have studied so far from one to, i mean from one to uh, seventh semester you will be evaluated once again in this comprehensive viva which is carrying a credit of 1 and the project work is for six credits okay and say suppose if you are planning to go take up the project work completely in the industry for a period of 6 months you are allowed so what is the prerequisite is here you have three courses okay so you are elective 7 8 and 9 this three courses if you are in a position to complete from 6th uh, in 6th and 7th se semester if you are in a position to take up this courses additionally and if you clear it okay and if you are if you are able to clear it you can you are allowed to take an internship for 6 months this is one option the other option is if you are planning to do in the industry you are allowed to take the moocs online courses even in the 8th semester also either the, there are two option either you can complete in advance or along with the project you have to take the mooc online courses in addition to your project the, these are the two options okay so along with the either you can go for mooc online courses or from the department also we will be uh, uh, taking the classes also A, any one of the options you can opt okay so in the eighth semester the total credits comes to 16 so as i said earlier the total credits for for uh, for, for clearing this btech csc is 164 credits so which is split up Uh, in a span of eight semesters so the summary is given here and coming to the electives okay so there are nine electives which is divided into five streams such as hardware system software system database networks and security programming so based on the students interest you can opt for the electives okay and there are two ele global electives or open electives which you need you need to do one is uh, one is from the economics background so you have a uh, various subjects like economics for it health economics managerial economics managerial information system if you are interested to 
proceed further in the economics area you can take any one of these subjects or if you are interested to do uh, research and all you can and go for numerical solutions or if you are interested you can take for ipr also intellectual property rights so out of these choices you have to opt one and the global elective 2 uh, all these subjects will be handled by the ec faculty in this any one subject you can take it out okay um, so this uh, entire curriculum structure and the syllabus will be uploaded in the institute website in a day or two okay so so i have given a brief introduction about the department and the curriculum structure for the csc so with this i am coming to an end of the session whatever the clarifications you have you can contact any one of us okay thank you one and all sindhu ma'am over to you thank you ma'am uh, thank you for uh, the overview of uh, department of uh, csc and both the students have got some idea uh, on how it will be uh, when it comes to academics and curriculum and uh, yeah it may look as if it is uh, uh, very difficult for you to understand this is for the students so don't worry once you get inside you will get to understand more uh, you know just by hearing you may not understand much of the things but you will definitely understand most of them once you enter inside the institution and thank you very much uh, ma'am uh, for your kind words and uh, now it's time for me to uh, introduce the head of the department uh, um, science science and humanities uh, dr kamakshi and uh, she is uh, uh, hello ma'am are you there yes ma'am okay ma'am uh, so uh, yeah we welcome you to the session ma'am and uh, i would like you to uh, introduce the department of uh, sciences and science and humanities to our um, you know freshmen freshmen thank you ma'am over to you thank you dr sindhu so good afternoon to each and every one so this is dr kamakshi and uh, i was graduated from indian institute of technology roorkee in 2012 and after that i did my post doctoral research at the university of minyo and university of porto for 3 years and i have 13 years teaching experience and uh, two research scholars namely mr arun kumar and mr tasneem they are carrying out their research under my supervision so uh, coming to the point first of all my hearty congratulations to all of you for getting admission at triple itt so far you have experienced it either school or college atmosphere but now you people are entering into the new world you are starting new journey of your life in academic excellence for pursuing your engineering degree from the institute of national importance so everything is new from new here for you new classrooms new professors and teaching style everything is different it is not like that uh, whatever you have at your plus 2 level so and friends also you will get from different states new friends and new technology definitely you will enjoy your education and life at triple itt and you will get very bright future let me introduce the department of science and humanities so as you ever engineering is a very diverse profession that requires different skills and uh, engineer has to perform many tasks like uh, personal management project development diagnostics many things but moreover in today's global world engineer is to be capable of intercultural communication in order to work with international partners and to run the joint projects so every engineering should become science and every science should become art so every engineering practice should be focused on dealing with science and arts in more innovative manner for the wider applications of welfare of human and society so department of science and humanities offering courses of studies on basic physical sciences mathematics economics and english for your btech course and the students uh, for the first year so students has to 
clear the courses of physics, maths, and English. So let me share my screen to give the curriculum of this first year courses. Already HOD CSC she shared. Just a minute. Just a minute, please. So for CSC students, you will have English for communication, mathematics one, physics, introduction to computer programming, basics of mechanical engineering, engineering practice, physics laboratory, introduction to computer programming laboratory. And uh, for NSS and NSO or NCC, you have zero credits. So total of 19 credits. And uh, second semester, you will have mathematics two, engineering graphics, Basics of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Introduction to Python Programming, Program Core 1, Object Oriented Programming, and Next Data Structures, Energy and Environmental Engineering, Oops Laboratory Data Structures. So this is a total of 22 credits. In the similar manner for ECE students, they will have for first semester Mathematics 1, Introduction to Computer Programming, Basics of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Engineering Graphics, Basics of Mechanical Engineering, Electrical Laboratory, Introduction to Computer Programming Laboratory, Engineering Practice, Total Pairs of 20, and for Semester 2, English for Communication, Mathematics 2, Physics, Introduction to Python Programming, and uh, Digital Principles and System Design, Solid State Devices, Energy and Environmental Engineering, Physics Laboratory, Digital Principles, and System Design Laboratory. So which comprises of 21 credits. So generally, engineering is nothing but the application of physics. So myself here teaches the physics paper for you, both theory and lab. So theory consists of five units. One is thermodynamics, electromagnetics, waves and quantum optics, lasers and fiber optics, semiconductor physics. And in our lab, you have to carry out 10 experiments. Due to this uh, pandemic, COVID pandemic, we are planning for virtual classes and labs for this semester. So if situation permits, we go for the offline classes and labs later. So next, mathematics is the language for studying science and engineering and hence its importance. So mathematics one paper, Dr. Jagadishwar P will teach you the mathematics one paper. So I request Dr. Jagadishwar to introduce himself. Dr. Jagadishwar sir, are you there? Okay, so Dr. Jagdishwar will teach you the Mathematics 1 paper and uh, he was graduated from NIT Warangal and he has 16 years of teaching experience and uh, he has four, 14 research publications and Ms. Susmita Priyadarshini is doing research in fluid dynamics under his guidance. So economics will be introduced as a basic course for you in the second year. This will provide you a base for applying your engineering skills as a building entrepreneurs. So Dr. Rimshud Vivedi will be handling this course for you from Department of Science and Humanities. And uh, her uh, PhD is from NIT Roorkela and uh, she has 18 publications. And Ms. Mega Shushan Philip, she is doing PhD under her guidance. Study of English and international language helps the students to improve the language skills, both in writing and communication. So Dr. Sindhu will teach you the paper English for communication. 
सिंधु मैम हेलो एवरीवन आई आई एम एम विद यू फ्रॉम द मॉर्निंग यस डॉक्टर सिंधु असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर बी हैंडलिंग इंग्लिश फॉर कम्युनिकेशन या वेटिंग टू मीट यू ऑल एंड वर्क टुगेदर थैंक यू so mr dinesh kumar vel is a research scholar who is working with sindhu so all the courses offered by dsh are designed and conducted in such a way that the requirements for meeting the challenges in the field of engineering is met with and the students are inducted easily into such courses so the department of science and humanities in fact lays a solid foundation for studying engineering so let me now spell out for you one thing you can hold as you are here that is keep sight of your goals life on campus is colorful there are many activities you can be part of and i do wish that each one of you will find your part in some of them we don't want you to be get just gathering information from here but we want you to learn character discipline compassion and value based education as said by dr devasena in the morning so i promise you that you will find the best time of your life during the course of study here life ahead can be exciting which you uh, wish you all the best for your studies and once again welcome you my dear students to a time of just for living and wonderful learning at triple it thank you uh thank you uka makshi ma'am uh now it's time for me to invite uh, dr vel murugan who is who is our mistress and he is uh, head department of uh, mechanical engineering he is he uh, also has uh, te- oh, i mean uh, a wide experience of teaching and uh, yes sir vel murugan sir it's uh, over yeah. to you thank you thank you ma'am thank you uh good afternoon Um, our faculty members of the Plate Team and my dear student friends, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. So, <clears throat> first of all, I uh, welcome you all to the Indian Minister of Information Technology, Prachar Pali. So, uh, my dear students, friends, just uh, this is the first day in your um, degree program. So, first thing is from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So, we are offering three subjects. Three subjects in your first year program. So our department of uh, uh, the next ma'am and Dr. Sita Raman sir, then Kamaksh ma'am also, they have explained clearly about the syllabus. That means the content of the subjects. So three subjects such as basics of mechanical engineering, engineering practice lab, then engineering graphics. So these three subjects you are going to learn in the first year of your degree program. so <clears throat> under this basics of mechanical engineering so uh, you may think uh, so we are uh, studying uh, electronics or computer science and what's the need of this mechanical engineering so when you come to the uh, subject so you can understand what's the use of mechanical engineering basics knowledge in your stream such as ec and computer science as well as the subject engineering graphics is totally uh, technical drawings so technical drawings means how you can view Uh, an object in a technical point of view. that means uh, what are the data and what are the information we can extract from a single image in the view of technicals that's the importance of engineering graphics then engineering practice it will be support to you to understand some basic um, kind of mechanical operations so which will be helpful in your day to day life also so my dear friends the student friends these three subjects were a uh, mechanical department offering in your degree program also <clears throat> in this orientation program so we have scheduled a number of activities like uh, so what are the syllabus what are the content uh, then uh, what are the rules and regulations and what are the uh, norms you have to follow for examination then grade system everything we have uh, scheduled in clearly so you can understand uh, so what are the process and what you are going to do in triple itt so each and faculty members they will explain clearly about those all thing so just i would like to say only few uh, only few lines which will be helpful in your degree program just a second i will share my screen
yes so, so my dear students friends so now you have uh, entered into the btech degree program it may be ec or computer science so you have finished your schooling then now you entered into college so these two are totally different just you understand so what's a uh, you know the importance of knowledge so in schooling so if we know the content or if we uh, just if we write or if you fill the papers means you can get the marks and you are the hero in your uh, schooling but college is totally different so here you should uh, you should gather you should understand the real uh, what's going so that means the importance of knowledge so practical knowledge the person so who has a real practical knowledge he is a hero in this college so these two are totally different so what i'm saying here is so students just you think so this is a first day so after your btech degree program after four years where you are going that means what you are going to do after your btech degree program just you think so you may think sir this is a, a first day then uh, you are telling about the end of the first year so so here one thing you got to notice this the in the first one today is the first day of rest of your life so today is the first day of rest of your life so you want to be happy then you want to work in some um, good industry or you want to become a researcher so what you are thinking after four years so just you plan today itself this is the first day in your degree program so after your btech degree program so you may go to uh, higher studies or uh, any uh, higher professions then uh, um, any placement something so you, you may become an entrepreneur also so what you want to do after your four years you have to decide today itself this is a right time to choose a uh, right uh, life after the four years so my dear students friends finally i want to say only few words the road to success never gets so don't limit your challenges challenge your limits okay so challenge your limits is a very important thing in this degree program so uh, again my best wishes to all uh, first year students thank you thank you all Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, you know motivation and also uh, encouraging the student to students to have a focus on what they want to be after four years. Thank you so much. And uh, now uh, there will be a short break until uh, three o'clock. Okay, you may yeah you may just stay in line and you will be i mean there will be you know you, there will be a yoga session uh, since from morning we have been you know listening to a lot of people and uh, getting to know a lot of new things i think it is also important to look after our own you know mental and physical health so we have uh, dr rainbow devi who will be uh, giving a demonstration and uh, who will give you some insights on uh, yoga and things so we will we have her here but we will start at three o'clock by then i'll give you an introduction to talk to you the session will resume at uh, three, 3 p.m
this second faculty one uh, dr renuka ma'am are you there yes ma'am i am here only okay. am i audible so sure. yes ma'am you are audible to us okay ma okay fine so uh, this dr uh, renuka devi is among us uh, she is a professor in department of computer science and engineering she just introduced a while ago and hope you learn yoga and its benefits and uh, maybe some demonstration from ma'am today this ma'am it's over to you thank you sindhu namaskaram am i visible yes ma'am namaskaram yeah namaskaram and uh, good afternoon my dear students and their parents first of all i like to congratulate all the students for getting admission in a centrally funded institute uh, this is the result of your hard work how do you feel at this moment on behalf of all the students can anyone tell me what do you feel today hello Uh, any one of you can uh, unmute yourself and talk uh, respond to ma'am's question so you got admission in the centrally funded institute how do you feel today any one student can respond ma'am i am very glad to be a part of this uh, premier institute i am looking forward uh, for the four years like it will be a fruitful year for, uh, for all of us that's what i wish very good very good pa thank you for your response and all the best thank you ma'am and it's a turn uh, it's a turn for parents i need one volunteer from parent side your ward got admission here how do you feel sir or uh, madam anyone from parent side Sindhu, uh, ma'am, I don't think uh, we have uh, parents amongst us. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So if there is anyone, uh, they can talk, and they can also use uh, uh, the language that they are comfortable with. Yes. I don't think we have anybody among us, so it's okay. 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 Fine. So, so thank you for your response, uh, Sattak Kumar. Uh, well, let me introduce myself. Uh, this is Dr. Rain Rainika Devi. I am working as assistant assistant professor in the department of CSE. I did my PhD in uh, National Institute of Technology, Trichy. I worked in Government Engineering College, Bharatpur, Rajasthan, and. National Institute of Technology, Varangal. I'm carrying an experience of 15 years in this teaching profession, and I'm the in charge of uh, our yoga club. So now we are going to start the session on yoga, in which our student members will present fundamental concepts of yoga. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, ma'am. so i am checking your readiness before uh, because uh, before transmitting the message the sender should uh, check the readiness of the receiver otherwise the data will be lost okay thanks for your response no matter what life throws at you what you make out of it is up to you isn't it am i right so we should be ready Uh, for all kind of uh, situations whether it is positive or negative once again i am repeating the statement no matter what life throws at you what you make out of it is up to you so you should be a relaxed joyful and a stress free individual so it's our wish and let us make it happen okay so with this i am handing over the session to our uh, Uh, yoga club volunteers so 
bhavna yes ma'am over to you thank you thank you namaskaram welcome to the yoga session hope you all are safe and sound this pandemic has clearly shown that how our uncertain our life could be we have witnessed a great havoc caused by an invis in invisible entity so it is very essential to have a right state of balance not just physically but mentally and emotionally too in order to joyfully tackle any challenge that life can offer so we bring you to yoga the way of life to become solution to every problem now ayush will be taking you through the presentation okay so before i start i would like to ensure that am i audible to everyone yes ayush yes ayush you are audible and uh, is the music audible too no the music is not audible okay so earlier it was audible now it is not Okay, so I'm back again. So, am I audible now? Yes, ma. Okay, and the uh, audio? Yeah, it is audible. Yeah, very mildly. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Good evening to everyone attending the meet and a special welcome to the freshers. Kindly allow me to help us explore what yoga is. One of the most understood words, yoga is among them. And not just it, but its near relatives like karma, atma and fate too are the victims of westernization. Moreover, there is a complex web of queries that are stacked up in our minds too. So let's take this an opportunity. explore the vast possibilities that yoga can offer and be proud of our indian heritage and let's see what yoga actually is through sadguru's perspective he is an indian mystic visionary and a yogi himself you must understand that uh, to be in yoga is the destination but somewhere along the way the process itself got named as yoga the process has many names which is kind of sunk into the background what is destination has become the name of the process today so if you bend and twist your body we would call those asanas but today that is yoga like this various processes in fact well 112 basic ways but millions of tools which have evolved out of this fundamentals every one of them today is known as yoga it's like if you go to the private bus station in Coimbatore you'll see somebody will be saying bangalore 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 you say where he'll show you the bus he means this bus goes to bangalore <laughs> but when he says he says bangalore 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 you say bangalore where where bangalore it's bangalore <laughs> the bus <laughs> so the vehicle has become bangalore just like that the vehicle or the tools have become yoga so before moving forward isn't it tempting to know how yoga is helpful in a student's life and not just an ordinary one but an engineering student and apart from all these importance it provides an immense balance not just mentally but physically and, em and emotionally too that will keep you focused toward your goal and explore how your body and mind can be used to reach greater heights 
and let's explore how indeed you can manifest whatever you want from the mystic himself even without doing any activity you can still manifest what you want if you organize these four dimensions in one direction and keep it unwavering in that direction for a certain period of time now he believes shiva will do it for him and it will happen so is shiva going to come and build your house no i want you to understand god will not lift his little finger for you what has not happened till now on this planet can happen tomorrow human beings are capable of making it happen tomorrow everything we as human beings have created on this planet was essentially first created in our minds all that you see which is human work on this planet first found expression in the mind then it got manifested in the outside world the wonderful things that we have done on this planet and the horrible things that we have done on this planet both have come from the human mind so if we are concerned as to what we create in this world it's extremely important that first of all we learn to create the right things in our mind how we keep our minds if we do not have the power to keep our minds the way we want it what we create in the world is also going to be very accidental and haphazard so learning to create our minds the way we want is the basis of creating the world the way we want there is a wonderful story in the yogic law on a certain day a man took a walk he went for a long walk accidentally unawares he walked into paradise fortunate isn't he <laughs> he just took a walk and he landed up in paradise after this long walk he felt little tired so he thought oh i am tired i wish i could rest somewhere he looked around there there was a nice tree underneath which there was very cushiony grass so it was inviting he went and put his head down there and slept after a few hours he woke up well rested and he thought oh i am well rested but i am feeling hungry i wish i had something to eat and he thought about all the nice things that he ever wanted to eat in his life and instantly all those things appeared in front of him you need to understand there the service is like that hungry people don't ask questions food came and he ate stomach became full then he thought oh my stomach is full i wish i had something to drink all the nice things that he ever wanted to drink he thought about it and all of them just appeared in front of him drinking people also don't ask questions so he drank now with a little bit of alcohol in him you know charles darwin told you all of you are monkeys your tail fell away not me charles darwin told you that you were all monkeys and your tail fell away and then you became human yes definitely the tail fell away but the monkey in yoga we always refer to an unestablished mind as markata which means a monkey why we are referring to the mind as a monkey is what are the qualities of a monkey one thing about a monkey is it's unnecessary movement and another thing about the monkey is if i say you're monkeying somebody what does it mean imitation monkey and imitation have become synonymous so these two essential qualities of a monkey are very much the qualities of an unestablished mind unnecessary movement you don't have to learn it from the monkey you can teach it to the monkey and imitation is full time job of the mind so when these two qualities are on a mind is referred to as a monkey so this monkey became active within him he just looked around but what the hell is happening here i asked for food food came 
I asked for drink, drink came. There must be ghosts around here, and ghosts came. Oh, the ghosts have come, they're going to surround me and torture me, he thought. Immediately the ghosts surrounded him and started torturing him. Then he started screaming in pain and said, Oh, they're going to kill me, and he died. Just now he said he's, or he's a fortunate being. The problem is he was sitting under a kalpa viksha or a wishing tree. He asked for food, food came. He asked for drink, drink came. He asked for ghost, ghost came. He asked for torture, torture came. He asked for death, death happened. Now don't go looking for these kalpa vrukshas in the forest. You can barely find a tree these days. A well-established mind, a mind which is in a state of some yukti is referred to as a kalpa viksha. If you organize your mind to a certain level of organization, it in turn organizes the whole system. Your body, your emotion, your energies, everything gets organized in that direction. Once all these four dimensions of you, your physical body, your mind, your emotion and the fundamental life energies are organized in one direction, once you are like this, anything that happens without even lifting a little finger actually, it would help to assist it with activity. But even without doing any activity, you can still manifest what you want. If you organize these four dimensions in one direction and keep it unwavering in that direction for a certain period of time, right now the problem with your mind is, every moment it is changing its direction. It is like you want to travel somewhere and every two steps if you keep changing your direction, the question of you reaching the destination is very remote unless it happens by chance. So, organizing our minds and in turn organizing the whole system and these four basic dimensions of who you are right now in one direction, if you do this, you are a kalpa vruksha yourself, anything that you wish will happen. But right now, if you look at your lives, everything that you have wished for till now, if it happens, you're finished. Everything and everybody that you have desired for, if all of that lands up in your house today, could you live with that? Once we're empowered like this, it's very important that our physical action, emotional action, mental action and energy actions are controlled and properly directed. If it is not so, we become destructive, self-destructive. Right now, that is our problem. The technology which is supposed to make our life beautiful and easy has become the source of all the problem that we are destroying the very basis of our life, which is the planet. So what should have been a boon, we are making a curse out of it. What has brought incredible levels of comfort and convenience to us in the last hundred years or so, has also become a threat to our life simply because we are not conscious action, we are in a compulsive state of action. So organizing our minds fundamentally means moving from a compulsive state of activity to a conscious state of activity. You might have heard of people for whom they asked for something and beyond all expectations it came true, to, true for them, Generally, this happens to people who are in faith. Now, let's say you want to build a house. If you start thinking, oh, I want to build a house, to build a house I need fifty lakhs, but I have only fifty rupees in my pocket, not possible, not possible, not possible. The moment you say not possible, you are also saying, I don't want it. So on one level, you are creating a desire that you want something, on another level, you are saying, I don't want it. So in this conflict, it may not happen. Someone who has some faith in a god or in a temple or whatever, who is a simple-minded, faith works only for those people who are simple-minded. Thinking people, people who are too much thinking, for them it never works. A childlike person who has a simple faith in his god or his temple or whatever, he goes to the temple and says, Shiva, I want a house, I don't know how. You must make it for me. Now in his mind, there are no negative thoughts. 
will it happen, will it not happen, is it possible, is it not possible. These things are completely removed by the simple act of faith. Now he believes Shiva will do it for him and it will happen. So is Shiva going to come and build your house? No, I want you to understand, God will not lift his little finger for you. What you refer to as God is the source of creation. As a creator, he has done a phenomenal job, there's no question about it. Could you think of a better creation than this? Is it in anybody's imagination to think anything better than what is there right now? So as a creator, he has done his job wonderfully well. But if you want life to happen the way you want it, because right now the very crux of your happiness and your well-being is this, if at all if you're unhappy, <laughs> the only and only reason why you're unhappy is life is not happening the way you think it should happen, that's all it is. So if life is not happening the way you think it is, it should happen, you're unhappy. If life happens the way you think it should happen, you are happy. It's as simple as that. So if life has to happen the way you think it should happen, first of all, how you think, with how much focus you think, how much stability is there in your thought and how much reverberance is there in the thought process will determine whether your thought will become a reality or is it just an empty thought or how you do not create any impediments for your thought by creating negative thought process. This possible, is something possible or not possible? He's destroying humanity. What is possible and not possible is not your business, it's nature's business. Your business is just to strive for what you want. Right now you're sitting here, if I ask you two simple questions, I want you to just look at this and answer this. Right now, from where you're sitting, can you just fly off? You say no. Right now, from where you're sitting, can you get up and walk? You'll say yes. What is the basis of this? Why you say no to flying and yes to walking? Because past experience of life, many times you've gotten up and walked, never did you fly off. Or in other words, you're using the past experience of life as a basis for deciding whether something is possible or not possible. Or in other words, you have decided that what has not happened till now cannot happen in your life in future. This is a disgrace to humanity and the human spirit. What has not happened till now on this planet can happen tomorrow. Human beings are capable of making it happen tomorrow. So what is possible and what is not possible is not your business. That is nature's business. Nature will decide that. You just see what is it that you really want and strive for that. And if your thought is created in a powerful way, without any negativity, without any negative thoughts, bringing down the intensity of the thought process, the first and foremost thing is you must be clear what is it that you really want. If you do not know what you want, the question of creating it doesn't that was a very enlightening video and we have come to a junction wherein there is one question that is lingering in all of us, our minds, that is, why yoga? We have seen what yoga is, how helpful it is us for a student like us and how it can be used to manifest the things we want. But the major question is, why actually yoga? So why yoga indeed? Isn't there any alternative to it, like a plan B, so that we can take it up? Or isn't it something that old people do? Or uh, we might, when we might get old, we would should take it up. Why now, as youngsters? And how about doing circus could transform my uh, transform my life immensely, standing upon head and twisting my arm in an impossible way, how could that possibly help me? So these questions are troubling a lot, but the last and major one is why do some people devote their whole life for the process of yoga? These questions trouble a lot of people, but fortunately we have answers for this. Uh, 
I don't want you to travel in the path of yoga. Whatever goddamn path you're traveling on, take yoga with you. It will make the path easy and beautiful. Sir. North or south, if it is dark, you take a torch, isn't it? Yes, sir. Only northward people take torch, southern people take darkness with you. Is it such a Sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Hi. Um. Yes. Hello? Yes, tapal, tapal, uh... Yes, and oh, he left the meeting, ma'am. Just now he left the meeting. Okay, okay, I know no. what uh, the person wanted to say. Let us just continue. Okay, sure, we'll continue. I don't want you to travel in the path of yoga. Whatever goddamn path you're traveling on, take yoga with you. It will make the path easy and beautiful. Whether you go north or south, if it is dark, you take a torch, isn't it? Only northward people take torch, southern people take darkness with you. Is there such a thing? No. See, everybody can drive a car today, but not everybody can hold the car on the road at 200 kilometers per hour, they'll fly off. Because for that you need a lot of understanding of how the machine functions. Similarly, if you function at a rudimentary level in your life, everybody will eat, sleep, reproduce and die. But if you want to raise a human being to a higher level of function, then there has to be a more profound understanding and perception of who we are and how we function. So this is what yoga is. If we bring this at an early age, free of all cultural trappings, we can bring it in such a way that it's purely scientific and logically correct way of doing things. If we bring this across the world into every child's mind, you will definitely find a more peaceful and joyful adults as they grow up. Why is this important? There is substantial evidence. You're peaceful and joyful, does your body and mind function at its best. If you want to be successful, your body and your mind should function at its best, there's no question about it. This, at least this much, must happen to every child. If this has to happen, it is important that children do not form strong ideas about anything, that their life remains a possibility to explore their life throughout their life. The aspect of exploration should remain alive. The aspect of having a certain sense of wonder to everything that we see must be there. By believing things, by attaching or identifying with certain ideologies and philosophies, we become dead sure about everything. When we become dead sure about everything, if somebody else believes something else, then clashes will happen. The fundamental aspect of education is to expand our horizons. Unfortunately, it's just working the reverse way simply because we are putting set ideas into children's minds. So yoga will undo that dimension, that it will not allow a human mind to become established in that way. This means, what this fundamentally means is, the nature of existence is uncertain. In this uncertainty, you are trying to create a false sense of certainty. Either you simply falsely believe that this ocean is going to be always calm like this and I'm going to sail over this, or you learn to navigate through a violent, un you know, uh, unpredictable ocean, you learn to navigate through that. Either you're equipped for it or you're not. So yoga is that aspect which clearly celebrates the uncertainties of life. We are not trying to create a certainty, we are just trying to equip ourselves to handle uncertainty.
Right now as you sit here, this body is very important. You have to feed this, you have to clothe this, you have to decorate this, you have to pamper this in so many ways. Tomorrow morning, that's something inside which you never experience. If that goes away, nobody wants to have any business with this. Yes? Only because the fruit is inside, this peel has become very valuable. Now yoga means not just about twisting your body, not about standing on your head, not about holding your breath, all these things a circus artist can do better than most yogis. Really? Yes or no? You don't think so? A circus artist can do far better than most yogis in terms of twisting the body, doing this, doing that, holding different positions. That is not the purpose of yoga. Unfortunately, if you utter the word yoga, people think you have to be in some impossible posture. Yoga is not about postures, it is just a minuscule aspect of yoga. Yoga means in your experience, everything has become one. The word yog means union. What is the union? What can unite with what? As you sit here, your idea and your sense and your experience of who you are is very strong. You're here as an individual. But what the trees are exhaling right now, you're inhaling. What you're exhaling, the trees are inhaling. Or in other words, one half of your lung is hanging out there. Yes or no? This is not just in terms of breath. Today, modern physics is proving to you that as you sit here, every subatomic particle in your body is in constant transaction with everything else in the existence. If this transaction stops, you will cease to exist. So yoga means to know it by experience. Modern science is proving to you the whole existence is just one energy. The religions of the world have been screaming for a long time that God is everywhere. Whether you say God is everywhere or you say everything is one energy, are we talking about the same reality or a different reality? God is everywhere, everything is same energy. Are we talking about the same reality or a different reality? Same reality. It is just that a scientist has never experienced this. He has arrived at it through mathematical deductions. A religious person has not experienced it. He believes it because it's written somewhere or it's said by somebody. If you are a hard case that you are not willing to settle for deductions or belief systems, then you become a yogi. Yes, if you are a very hard nut, you want to know it yourself, then you become a yogi. You want to know the union of the existence, you want to know the oneness of what it is, not believing it. Like you experience the five fingers of your hand, if you can experience everything around you, then we say you are in yoga. So here, as a logical being, we have come to the most fascinating part, the most awaited and essentially important one that how far does science agrees with yoga? And has modern science come in term with the teachings that yogis have been propounding since ages? And what are the significant research and findings that explains the marvels of yoga? Listen carefully. This is an ancient Indian dude with far too much time on his hands. And these guys are cutting edge pioneering brain scientists now, what could they possibly have in common? Welcome to the science of yoga and what it means to us, part one. Let's go back thousands of years to the ancient world. The first mystics would leave their towns, villages and everyday distractions to find solace in the forest. There, in isolation, they studied their own inner experience. 
As they looked within, what they found was a myriad of thoughts and emotions, just like most people would. And also, like most people, these thoughts seemed to cause anxiety and seemed to serve no real practical purpose. But with vigilant observation, the mystics found that when they stopped feeding their thoughts, they started to get quieter and quieter. They were quite literally changing their state of mind from the inside out. The mystics in India called this practice vipassana, which means clear seeing. Today, we call it meditation. Now, fast forward to the early 2000s. Scientists studying the brain and the effect of brain exercises started to make some surprising discoveries. Brain science was still in its infancy. And in fact, up until late into the 20th century, it was still thought that the brain was solid, like concrete, unable to change in its structure. But then they discovered a phenomenon called brain plasticity. It seemed the brain could actually change. It could be shaped and rewired by exercise. And guess what they found had the power to cause structural changes? Yep, meditation. Several studies found a whole host of structural changes in the brains of people who meditated. Here are some of the changes they found. The default mode network, which could stimulate wandering and aimless thought grooves, was quietened down. The amygdala, which processes fear and anxiety, reduced in size and activity. Grey matter in the sensory regions of the brain increased, which in turn enhanced sense perception. These were startling discoveries, and it became clear that there was something to this ancient practice after all. But it's not just neuroscience. The field of psychology also owes some recent developments to this Eastern philosophy. The mystics of old times claimed this simple fact. With regular insight, you'll see that your thoughts are not real. And the recent success of cognitive talk therapy uses this exact same strategy. The subject learns to see the falseness of their own repetitive thinking. They're simply an interpretation of what is going on, not the actuality of what's going on. So what's the difference, you might ask? Well, say someone next to you makes a sarcastic remark. This may trigger you to start thinking about a number of possible explanations, and they could all be completely false. For example, she did that on purpose. Everyone does this to me. They're all planning to keep me down, etc. See how these thoughts lead to other thoughts which multiply with each other? The philosophy of Vipassana is to see that these thoughts are nothing more than stories in your head. And as you get better, they stop multiplying so quickly. But don't be disheartened. It takes practice. By the way, you don't necessarily have to look like a yogi or sit like a pretzel to meditate. So whether it's breathing meditation, watching meditation, dancing or fishing meditation, whatever clears your mind is a great place to start. All of these techniques contribute to a healthier mind. There is something that brain science is starting to substantiate, and it's what ancient mystics said all those years ago. So great. So there are multiple and innumerable benefits of yoga if you do it regularly, as you can see on the slide. And not just physically, but emotionally and mentally too. So, now Bhavna will take you to some of the most important yoga practices. Over to you, Bhavna. So, hope I am loud and clear. And uh, now we are going to do two yoga practices. So, I request everyone to sit comfortably so that you will be able to do these two yoga practices. Okay. Now, in this session, we are going to learn two yoga practices. One is the Nadi Shuddhi and the other one is Namaskar process. So, first we'll do, we'll start with Nadi Shuddhi. The word Nadi Shuddhi literally means the cleansing of Nadis. When we say Nadis, we are talking about two basic Nadis, Pingala and Ida. When we do Nadi Shuddhi, we are cleansing Pingala and Ida so that the energy system will work in balance. Not only cleansing Nadis, it also have other benefits like it improves our respiratory health and reduces stress and anxiety and it prepares you for the advanced pranayama. Now, the person in the video will demonstrate you how to perform Nadi Shuddhi. Please observe it carefully.
Now, I request everyone to practice Parishuddhi for the next three minutes. So, everybody sit in the cross leg push position and sit as erect as possible and start marching. yoga practice is namaskar process you can see the posture on the slide so you can either sit or stand in this posture so most of us already know this posture but we don't know the importance of namaskar process in the next video sadguru will explain you the importance of namaskar process i request everyone to practice this namaskar process for 2 minutes in the namaskar posture and look at something that means much to you either or your favorite thing Thank you. 
Before concluding, let's have a takeaway session for the present youth. What is it that the youth needs to concentrate on, but they have not yet? In India, the mango farmers have some wisdom in their lives. I have been a mango farmer in the past. Just after twelve, fourteen months after planting, uh, if it's a well-grafted plant, Within fourteen months, flowers will come when the season comes. First thing we do is we'll pluck off the flowers. If you leave it, a few mangoes will come, but we will take it off. Next season again the flowers come, we'll take it off. We will wait for the plant to grow because we know if the fruit comes out of that plant, that plant will never grow into a full-fledged tree. It will not bear as much fruit as it could if it bears too early. So this is something youth must remember. Don't try to live too early. This is the time where you build yourself in body, in mind, in competence, in capability. You build yourself. Time to live will come. If you live too early, then you will see you will not live a full-fledged life. So right now, we have imported this from Western societies. By the time you're fourteen, you must have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. By the time you're at eighteen, you have had three heartbreaks. Where the hell are you focusing on building yourself? These things are taking so much time and energy. Build yourself up well if you want to live well. So, there is a certain time to grow and there's a certain time to live. If you live too early, you will not grow. And if you don't grow, the scale and scope of your life will be very limited. That should not happen to you. We thank everyone for cooperating with us. And the two yoga practices we have learned today are very powerful that could bring a change in your life. So it is recommended to practice them daily. In further sessions, we will be teaching you more yoga practices and we are looking forward for your active participation. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Namaskaram. Students, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Thank you, Ayush and uh, Bhavna and other uh, core members of our uh, yoga club. Uh, first year students, whatever uh, you learned today, so all these videos are available in YouTube. So if you have any doubt, so you can just check in in uh, YouTube and uh, try to do it uh, regularly. Uh, so it will give you an enormous, a tremendous benefit. Okay. Uh, so be relaxed and be joyful. And we are here to support you in all levels. May the uh, joy be with you. All the best. Thank you, students. Sindhu, over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, introducing two important uh, yogic concepts today to the uh, students. And hope they have uh, got a good idea of how uh, yoga can be helpful to a person in his personal and professional life. Yes, I believe everybody has uh, benefited out of it. And uh, yeah, the students will be with me, I believe. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rehinga ma'am, and uh, the student volunteers for your uh, uh, preparation and a uh, wonderful presentation and uh, the, uh, the arrangement, the way you have arranged the concepts that have really taken him to a journey, okay? Thank you very much. Renuka ma'am, thank you uh, so much for arranging this event for the uh, freshmen. Thank you. Welcome, Sindhu ma'am. Yeah, with that, uh, we have come to the end of uh, uh, orientation day one, orientation program day one. So I hope everybody has benefited out of uh, uh, today's sessions on you know, various aspects of uh, how your campus life will be and uh, how your academic is taking a turn in all those aspects. 
so i look forward to meet you tomorrow uh, so i would uh, like you to join like today at 9:45 pm sorry am 9:45 am in the morning and uh, yeah i once again congratulate everyone and i am glad meeting everyone uh, today in the virtual mode and i believe we will meet soon okay in the uh, yeah so yeah, thank you very much and see you tomorrow 9:45 in using the same link you should join uh, the meet again thank you